This is Bill Bethune, Managing Partner with Construction Science. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to update a schedule using an Excel spreadsheet. It's actually one of my favorite methods because I can send the spreadsheet to another party. They do not need PrimoGrab, and certainly they don't need to understand how to use the program. Almost everyone can update an Excel spreadsheet. The first part here, I'd like to point out I'm using PrimoVera Contractor. It's one of the older Primavera programs, but it works the same in every program. I'm demonstrating this to show those users of Contractor that even you can do this. The most important thing is you must have the file open to do an export. And you can see I've already got a project called California Highway Project open. Next, we go to File, Export. Ignore that message. We're having a little bit of an issue with our contractor installation. I choose Spreadsheet. Go to Next. For a simple update, I only need activities. I'm not going to try to change any relationships. That's a bit more difficult. And I wouldn't advise doing it in Excel until you're very comfortable with the process. I've already created a template. I'll show you what it looks like. Certain information is mandatory, such as the ID, the status, and the WBS. That information cannot be removed from the template. This is true for all templates. Everything else is optional, but some of this is mandatory for the purpose of updating the schedule. I need the remaining duration. I think it's useful to have original duration as well. I'm putting in activity percent complete, which we need. I'm even putting in the percent complete type because the way that we update an activity differs depending on whether it's physical or duration percent complete. And we're going to demonstrate both. We must have actual start and actual finish. Start and finish are optional, but for reference point, it tells you what the, what the goal was, what the original start and finish dates were for that task. All right. I've also... I could consider a filter. Currently, I'm showing all activities being exported. But if you're sending out this spreadsheet every month, as you can imagine, there's probably a great number of activities that will not be started in the current update period. So to cut down on the size of the spreadsheet, you could filter them out. And these are the same filters you create normally when you're inside Primavera. The only other thing I did was to sort the activities by activity ID to make it easier for me to look them up in the spreadsheet. I click OK. Next, I've already created a file path, which is right on my desktop, and then finish. Wait a moment. We have confirmation. I go to my desktop, and it's right here. Let's open it up. I'm going to expand out all the columns just wide enough that we can read the data. And there it is. My first line is actually the contract start, contract approval. It's a duration percent complete. For this activity, I need to give it, of course, an actual start date, but you might also notice this is why I wanted to be able to see what the planned start date was. It's an older file, but the concept is the same. As you're starting to fill out actual dates, it's nice to have the reference of what the dates should be. But I'm going to say we started one day late. And the way I'm typing this is very deliberate. You must mimic the date format that's in the actual start and the actual finish columns. You do not need to type the time of day, but the other part must be correct. This is a milestone. There is no finish date. I do not need to fill that out. The only other thing is I am going to let Primavera know, of course, that it's done by typing in 100%. And notice how the 100 lines up differently than the zeros. No other activity in the schedule currently has progress. When you export Primavera data, Excel sees it as a number stored as text, not as a real number. But when you type a number, then Excel recognizes it as being, well, a number. Don't worry that the format of this looks different than the other ones. 
You can leave both the way they are. Now the next activity is physical percent complete. Unlike the first one where the remaining duration is linked to the activity percent complete, here we used to call it independent in P3, meaning that the remaining duration does not affect the percent complete or vice versa. It's a very powerful way of updating because I can report, for example, that we're 50% complete with the task. Now, it wouldn't do me any good to call it 50% if I don't give it a start date. This is always true even if you're updating the schedule inside Primavera. And once more, to make sure that I type it exactly the same way, including four digits for the year. So there's my 1214. With the physical percent complete, I have to manually update the remaining duration. I'm going to leave 15 days, which is to say I'm leaving 75% of the original duration, which is 20. And see, they don't have to match. With duration percent complete, the percent would have to be exactly the way we see it over here. I'm leaving 75% for the duration. 50% is what I'm recording as progress. Essentially, I'm saying it's taking us longer than I expected. We've only done 25% of the mobilization in terms of time, but I'm reporting 50% complete. So we still have 75% of the original duration left for completing this task we call mobilization. Now, also with the physical percent complete, there's one other thing we have to do. We have to tell them about the status. Now, the first one is technically complete, but I don't have to report it if it's duration percent complete. By making it 100%, putting in actual start, and if it's a regular task, actual finish. Keep in mind, the one I updated is a milestone. But with the physicals, you must report the progress as being in progress. This is the one of three activity statuses that we can report. So if you're familiar with this inside Primavera, you've seen this before. The activity is either not started, completed or in progress. I have to be sure I type it exactly the way it appears in Primavera, capital I, capital P. If you don't get it right, the update process won't work correctly. In the future, if you continue updating the schedule, some of these activities will say in progress and you can just simply copy that phrase from one cell to another. But this is the very first time, so it's slightly trickier, but really not too difficult. So I've shown it as in progress, and that's it. Otherwise, we need to save the file and close it. I'm going to close Excel altogether, but that's not necessary. We go back to the program. The schedule must still be open that we're planning to modify. I go to File, Import. Again, ignoring this little message that we've been getting recently. Click on Spreadsheet. Next. I know it's on my desktop. Also, notice the file format, 1997 to 2003. Whenever you export from Primavera, and this is true for all versions of Primavera, it saves it as a slightly older version of Excel. We do not want to upgrade it. If you're ever asked, to save it as a more current version while you're still in Excel, say no. Primavera cannot read them. All right, I've selected it, click Open, Next. Of course, we only exported activities. That's the only thing I can bring back in. If anything goes wrong, you'll see a blue hypertext to let you know what it is went wrong. Usually it's because you did not type the actual start and actual finish date formats correctly. If that happens, just reopen the spreadsheet and try it again. All right, so the first activity, duration percent complete, obviously it's 100, and you see the actual start date. For the second one, I left 15 days. This was a physical percent complete, as we can see in the bottom window. But I called it 50% complete in terms of progress, and once again, you see the actual start date. So it's a great process. That's pretty much all you have to watch out for. Test it a few times to make sure you understand that it's working correctly. But otherwise, I think you'll find it very convenient, especially 
when sometimes you're collecting data for the update from other parties. Now, technically, of course, I need to advance the data date and reschedule the project. But otherwise, you can see that this is a very fast way of inputting progress. Again, my name is Bill Papoon, Managing Partner with Construction Science. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We have two websites, constructionscience.com and primaveraschedulingcom which is our training website. You can also reach me at 916-779-4145. Thank you.